Okay, I thought I'd make a, one more amendment because um, you can see it's all it's all a bit over the place. It's not it's not it's all a bit wonky donk, as it <laughs> for want of a, so let's sort that out. So simple. The, the easiest way of doing this is just parent everything to an empty. Um, so object mode, add empty, and then just, just hold down shift and stuff everything in under the empty. The camera. Point can hold that. Just hold down that shift. Stick it all there. Right. So now we have the empty. We can then rotate the empty um, to try and sort the orientation out. Maybe we would want to hide the the point cloud just so we can see the plane, for example. And maybe you want that plane flat. I mean, it's useful to do this with the you know before you start really getting into the modeling because obviously. If you're um, if you're if you're all aligned to the, the world coordinate system, um, then it makes it easier on the you know you, you, I mean I'm just messing about here but but yeah basically obviously you just make the verticals vertical that's the main thing um, yeah that all looks vertical to me maybe you'd want to make the ground actually on the ground. And this is where you know maybe processing the in meta shape and actual moving from the initial sole camera sole with the low res generate the high res points and then mesh them you know then you're looking at geometry and then that's maybe a bit easier but if you need to do something quick and you just want a camera track and you're not really too fussed about the because you'll be built you only need to let's say do a set extension or paint out something on the on the side of a building or something you don't really need to go to the effort of meshing everything. Although, you know, doing a high-res photogrammetry model is obviously more accurate, so it helps with things like the snapping. So yeah, there we go. And now you can see the grounds on the ground, and that's all working. Okay, that was it. I just wanted to amend the video. I need to talk about the distortion thing because that is important. Um, the best advice I could give you is shoot a lens grid if you're going to be doing visual effects and go through all your prime your, your lens kit and shoot the grid to the different lenses and make a note of which lens you're shooting for you know on the, on the grid so you know 50 or whatever um, I know that's not always possible and you can in some programs like Nuke it can when it does the 3d track or PF track it can it can actually generate an understort for you and then you'd render out the frames and you, supposedly you can do this in MetaShape, but I've yet to get that feature to work. It, it will do the under, it, it should be able to generate undistorted image planes for then you to use elsewhere. But I haven't managed to get that to work. Um, but I need to mention because the thing is, if you if you, there is lens distortion, the geometry will slip. And by lens distortion, I mean the kind of bowing or pin cushioning effect that you get with wide angle lenses, the sort of lens barrel of distortion they call it. Um, so you need to remove that so that all straight lines are straight and they don't have any kind of fisheye effect. Okay, that's it. Oops, stop the video. If I can work the computer, 